Hi, Carla. Hi, Michelle. You know, in watching Laurel Canyon, I don't know why I thought the mamas and papas were together more than two years. I don't know if it's because you all's music has lived so much further beyond that. Wow, it was only two years? That's amazing. We would write, record, tour, and come home and start over again. But it was great because we never did any of that bus stuff. (laughs) We went straight to the Learjet. (laughs) (laughs) That's hilarious. I could never have done it. Well, the Journeyman, the group that John was in before, did the southern lap of the Hoot Nanny tour in a bus. And I accompanied them for a part of it, but I couldn't stand it, you know. It's really noisy. You can't hear. You can't sleep. I toured. I used to be a background vocalist, and I toured with Tracy Chapman. Great. Being on that bus, it was a lot. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's giving me agita just thinking about it. Yeah, and... We always were living very high on the hog. I mean, we never made any money touring, but that's how you sold records back then. You know, we were very self-contained. You know, I mean, the band flew commercial and we flew in a private jet. It was fabulous. I think it was you that said that you guys were hippies, but you eventually became the establishment when you moved out of Laurel Canyon into like (laughs) Beverly Hills or Bel Air or someplace. Bel Air, yeah. John and I bought a house out in Bel Air Road. We went from being hippies to being really rich hippies. And yeah, basically became the establishment. (laughs) That's hysterical. Would you say that the mamas and the papas were aspiring to artistry as opposed to aspiring to success or vice versa? Oh, we were just grabbing whatever we could get. It was all very new for us. You know, when we were a trio, it was me and John and Denny before Cass joined us. We were singing folk music, but then John started writing his own material. I eventually became a member of the new journeyman, and then we met Cass through Denny. We got her to join the group, and that's when we heard Mr. Tambourine Man by the birds on the radio, and we said, oh my God, we got to get to California. (laughs) Yeah, I came here from the Midwest, and it's a completely different situation. I don't ever want to go live in snow and cold and ice ever again for the rest of my life. It's a situation. Well, I can't tell you how many times hundreds of people have said to me, you know, I used to live in Cleveland, and I heard California Dreamin', and I packed up my VW bus, and I drove to California, and I never looked back. (laughs) I overstand that sentiment one bazillion percent. Speaking of California dreaming, what are you California dreaming about post-quarantine? I just want to go back to my favorite restaurant and hang with all my waiters. (laughs) Those are my closest friends. (laughs) I live alone now, so I don't cook anymore. I used to cook all the time, but cooking for one person is not very much fun. So I go out. I'm so used to going out and sharing lunches and dinners with my friends. And that's what I want to do. I want to be able to socialize again. Yeah, I think we all are feeling that. You were mentioning Cass a little earlier. What is your fondest memory of her? (laughs) She made me laugh so much. She was such a funny woman. I remember once we were doing a song that John wrote called Words of Love. Uh Uh-huh. She's out in the studio with this interviewer, and John and Lou Adler are in the booth. They say, Cass, can we get a vocal from you now? And she say, you know, I'm busy. (laughs) (laughs) And so she would talk a little longer to the interviewer, and they'd they'd say, "Uh, Cass, do you mind? Just give us a vocal, okay? One vocal, and then you can get back to your interview. And she says, oh, for God's sakes. And John says, Cass, just pick up the mic and stand up on the piano. She got up, crawled up on the piano, got up on top. She says, okay, roll it. And she did Words of Love in one take all the way through. And she says, got it? We're just all flabbergasted. She did this beautiful take. Then at the end of it, she dropped the mic. And she says, did you get it? They said, yes, Cass, we got it. You were great. (laughs) go back to your interview now that's amazing and i remember when we were playing carnegie hall she of course sang the lead on dream a little dream and for some reason she had never done this before went down to the apron of the stage and she sat down with her legs dangling over the side of the apron of the stage and she sang dream a little dream of me 
I swear it made me cry. Mm. It was so beautiful. That was written by a friend of ours who lived in Mexico City named Fabian Andres. He wrote it with two other people. My dad called me to tell me that Fabian had been in an accident in, in Mexico. He walked into an elevator and the elevator wasn't there and he fell down the shaft. Oh my God, that's yeah. terrible. I know. We just started singing Dream a Little Dream. John said, Cass, come and sing this. <laughs> and it was a song that was just tailor made for her. That is such a wonderful story. I thank you so much. I could talk to you all day. I'm so fascinated. I'm just uh, completely <laughs> fascinated. I did want to round it out with one I'm last. A real chatterbox. <laughs> I am too. So we got that in common. Well, with shows like American Idol and The Voice on, and them doing these different innovative things with vocals and artists, what do you think made the magic musical chemistry? work for the mamas and the papas back in the day blend just blend <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the hardest things to get cast to do because she was so used to singing up front everything was her you know when she was in the big three she was the voice and so she could sing at the top of her lungs you know she was a belt when she started to sing with me she had to learn how to control her voice because i had a very kind of lilting soprano and Denny was just about the best tenor in the business and John was a fantastic vocal arranger. We just had this sound that came out when we fine-tuned the tone of our voices. We could almost hear a fifth voice when we sang together. Wow. Correctly. You guys were a great group. You broke all kinds of records. You were the first group, I believe, that was a gender mix. Yeah. That's one of the things that I really enjoyed and loved about you, Cass, Denny, and John. I can hear in your voice that they were very dear and they hold very special memories for you. And I'm so grateful yeah. that you shared them with me. Well, you're welcome, Carla. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs> of course, that's my job. To keep up with the Curvy Critic, like our page here, click that subscribe button, and click that bell for notifications. Love, peace, and hair grease, y'all.